Hi everybody, very welcome to another episode of Mentor Aviation News. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today on the news guys, we'll be covering the first ever commercial grade flight made on hydrogen only. We'll also be covering a very surprising new revenue stream for Thai Airways, as well as a New Zealand company looking into buying fully electric airliners to cover their fleet. And at the end, if you stay that long, I will be telling you how things are going with the Boeing 737 MAX saga and their efforts to try to recertify the aircraft, so stay tuned. Guys, every single news that I will be talking about today has been chosen from inside of the Mentor Aviation app. It's completely free to download. There's a link in the description of this video and a link up here as well. And if you're interested, go and download it and you will be fed with all of the most interesting and more current news from the aviation world every single day. There are also fun forums where you can talk about technical things with other aviation enthusiasts as well as chat and 737 courses, how I show you how to fly the 737. So go and get the app now, it's completely free to download. And also inside of the app, as well as here in the description, you can get some awesome Mentor Aviation merch, which I, I just know that all of you want. Okay guys, so the first news I wanted to cover is the first ever flight with a commercial grade aircraft using hydrogen only. So those of you who are following the channel would have noticed that last week I did a episode about how um, Airbus is coming out with a new concept they call Zero E, which stands for Zero Emission. And in that concept, they're looking into creating an airliner that can be powered by only the use of hydrogen. Okay, they had a timeline set up for a kind of concept aircraft to be developed and extra demonstrated to be used by 2025 and commercial use of the aircraft in around 2035. So that's quite a while from now. But last week, the first ever flight was done with hydrogen as its only energy source. This is a converted Piper Malibu that was flown by the UK based um, company Zero Avia. Um, they took off from Bedfordshire and they flew at about a thousand feet, a couple of rounds around the airport and then they came back in and landed. But what was so unique was that the only thing driving that aircraft was hydrogen that went in through a fuel cell, converted hydrogen into electricity, which drove the electric motor. So this is the first time that this has been done on such a large aircraft. There are smaller aircraft that, that uses hydrogen already, but this is the first time a larger aircraft are doing it. And um, Zero Avia is working on trying out this aircraft even further. They are going to next take it up to Scotland, out to the uh, Orkney Islands, and do a flight of at least 250 miles to show how viable hydrogen is as a, as a fuel for longer flights as well. So why am I so, um, so excited about this and why do I choose to take it up in this episode? Well, the fact is I want you to start thinking about hydrogen as an actual alternative to fossil fuels. Okay? I know that when Airbus says that something is going to happen in 2035, it feels like that's ages away. But I just wanted you with this show that hydrogen can already be used. All right? Granted, it is not as economical as fossil fuels. The fact is that it's going to require about 30% higher costs. That cost comes in the form of the aircraft actually being heavier, which means that it's using more um, energy. It also it comes to infrastructure and actually the cost of the hydrogen itself. But I am completely convinced that as we start to see more and more of this, and as the climate changes becomes more and more apparent for everyone, well then this uh, technology will become more and more mature. It's going to be cheaper to get your hold on, on hydrogen and fuel cells is going to become cheaper and so will the infrastructure to get you know, the hydrogen to the aircraft in order to fuel it up. So for me, it's just a really, really positive step in the right direction and I'm looking forward to see more from Zero Avia and all of the other startups that's going to start using this technology going forward. So great work. 
The next segment is about Thai Airways. Now it doesn't come as a surprise to any of you who's following this channel that the aviation industry is really struggling right now. Uh, people are not traveling as much as they used to. There are still restrictions in between countries, which means that quite a few of the airlines are looking into trying to find new revenue sources in order to stave off the debts, basically. Now, I talked in my last news episode about how some airlines have started doing flights to nowhere, where basically you can go on board an aircraft and you can fly for a sightseeing flight and then come back and land at the same place that you started. But Thai Airways have actually gone one step further. They realized that they have something in their position that a lot of people want, and that is their pilot training center. So they have decided to allow the general public to come in and book flights in their full fidelity level D full flight simulators. Well, but it's going to cost quite a bit, but we'll get to that in a second. So the idea here is that anyone from the general public would be able to go in to, I presume, their website and book either a 30 minute, 60 minute or a 90 minute flight. The flight is going to be done with actual pilots, so presumably Thai Airways instructors and pilots are going to come and sit into the seat and then you'll be able to go out and do a, a lesson. The types that they are going to make available are the Boeing 777, the Boeing 747, the Airbus A380, the Airbus A300 and my favorite, the Boeing 737. The cost is going to be for 30 minutes about 12,000 baht. Now that is a little bit steep, it's about $380. Uh, and the full lesson, the 90 minute lesson, is a whopping 36,000 baht, which is $1,130 more or less in today's value. So that may sound quite expensive, but the fact is that the fidelity in these level D simulators are absolutely fantastic. You will go full flight flying and um, these kind of experiences are available in other third party or like commercial flight schools that might be selling these kind of experiences as well. But very rarely will you ever get access to the actual simulators used by actual airlines. And if you do, these kind of prices are not that high. Now, if you are interested in doing something like this, I highly recommend you to prepare before, right? It is fun to just go in and kind of see if you can fly a 737, but it's much more fun to go in and fly procedures that you have already studied. So just as a tip, inside of the Mentor Aviation app, you can buy my all-in-one collection. That's two hours of me instructing you on how to fly the 737 and everything from a full setup until engine failure after takeoff, uh, wind shear escape maneuvers, TCAS maneuvers, and much, much more. It's available for $20 inside of the app. And if you're gonna go and do an experience flight in a simulate like this, I highly recommend you to get something like that in order to prepare yourself. But it's interesting to see what the airlines are doing now to try to get revenue streams. Um, Thai Airways, this is not the only thing that Thai Airways are doing. They recently uh, remade their personal cafeteria into a restaurant as well. And I can kind of understand why, because they are at the moment struggling with a debt of about $7.83 billion. Not that I think that this is gonna make much of a dent in that debt, but hey, every revenue source is a good revenue source. For my next news, it's another thing that's really exciting in the area of sustainable flight. So in New Zealand, there is an airline called Sounds Air. Uh, they do a lot of short hops in between the islands, um, about 50 to 100 nautical miles flights. So very, very short flights. Now recently, they have signed a letter of intent with the Swedish company Hart Aerospace about potentially buying their newly developed, fully electric airliners. Now, Hart Aerospace is working on an airliner that will seat up to 19 passengers and will travel a range of 400 nautical miles. And Sounds Air is saying that that range is actually perfect for the kind of operation that they're doing. Now, the costs of this airline is going to be more or less the same as an equivalent um, aircraft that's using fossil fuels, but of course, the actual running costs of a fully electric aircraft is much, much lower, not to mention the fuel costs. Hart Aerospace still working on this aircraft. It's not available yet. They're looking at a possible certification in about 2025 to 2026. 
and they're saying that the time it will take to fully charge an aircraft in between the, um, the flight is going to be between 30 and 40 minutes. And these are the kind of news that I really want to hear. All right. Like I said in my episode on Friday, I don't think that we will see um, battery powered aircraft as a, as a kind of usable uh, vehicle for long haul flights. But for these kind of flights, for short haul flights in between maybe cities in, out in the bush in New Zealand, Australia, Russia, Sweden, Finland, Scotland, Canada, this is perfect and it can open up a completely new section of the aviation business. Potentially it can make these kind of flights much more economically viable than they were before. And finally, I am going to continue to talk about the ongoing recertification efforts of the Boeing 737 MAX. So tomorrow is actually a hugely important date in the MAX saga. Tomorrow, the 30th of September, the FAA administrator, a former Delta pilot and former F-15 fighter pilot Steve Dixon is going to take the controls of the 737 MAX and fly it for the first time. He's going to do this as part of a pledge that he did um, back in June where he said that he would not let this aircraft be degrounded unless he had personally flown the aircraft. And it's a huge deal. It shows a lot of confidence on behalf of the FAA in the aircraft, the fact that they are actually you know, letting their personnel go in and flying the aircraft. Um, before he gets to fly the aircraft though, Steve is going to have to take his co-pilot and go through the proposed training material that the uh, Joint Operations Evaluation Board has come up with. The Joint Operations Evaluation Board is a joint venture between several aviation authorities, uh, Transport Canada, EASA from Europe, the National Civil Aviation Agency of Brazil, and they have basically sat down last week and worked on a training package for the MAX. Now, this is what Steve and his co pilot is going to go through. First, some ground school and then some training in a simulator. After he's done that, they're going to go out, they're going to fly the MAX, and then they come back to, to give their view on whether or not the program is sufficient, the training program is sufficient, or if there's something that should be added to it. Now, after that, the FAA is going to sit down, they're going to take in the feedback that they got from Steve and his co-pilot, and they're going to work on a final kind of package for the MAX. That has to then be released for peer review. So they're going to release, this is what we want to, to happen. People are going to be able to comment on that. They will take in the comment, and then, only then, are they going to be able to finally kind of put the last screw into the recertification work. Realistically, this will happen towards the, the end of the fourth quarter in 2020. However, it's important to note that the FAA have not set a timeline. They've not set a specific date on this process, but we can kind of start seeing that some of the major players like American Airlines, for example, are starting to plan training in the simulators for their 1700 pilots. Now, American Airlines have gone out and have said that we know that we don't have the finalized training program yet and there might be changes to this. The only reason that they're planning it is because they anticipate that this process will now be done. As soon as they have the training program, at least then the planning is done, their pilot can start doing the training and eventually start flying the aircraft as soon as it's allowed to leave the ground. Now, I am personally very excited about this. I'm looking forward to fly the aircraft myself, but I would love to hear what your views are on this. So go into the comment section below. Let me know if there's any news this week that I've missed, something you think that I should have been talking about, or what you think about the recertification work or anything else. I'd love to hear from you. And also before I go, like I said, you can come in, you can discuss these things directly with me and other commercial pilots inside of the chat of the Mentor Aviation app. And also, I have gotten a lot of feedback where people have been asking me how I do my YouTube channel, uh, what kind of books you should be reading before you start your commercial um, flight training and general things about aviation. So what I've done is I've put together a, an Amazon page 
all right? With some of the cool aviation stuff that I've found, some of the flight simulator accessories, books and things like that. And I'm gonna link to that down here. So you can go down and you can check out that link and see if there's something that you need. Maybe you need some pilot shirts or some shoes or whatever. All of that is available in here. Just as a disclaimer, if you do buy something from inside of my Amazon page, then some of that revenue is gonna to come to me. So I hugely thank you for your support. Have an absolutely fantastic day wherever you are and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Right guys, I really hope that you liked that. If you want more content like that, more aviation content, well then check this out. Uh, I hope that you have subscribed to the channel and that you've highlighted the little notification bell. See you inside of the Mentor Aviation app and have an absolutely fantastic day. Bye-bye.